हेलो एवरीवन सो या सो फुली आई एम ऑडिबल टू एवरीवन सो वी विल स्टार्ट द लाइव गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सो लेट मी स्टार्ट टुडेस वीक थ्री लाइव सेशन so do you will have any problem or anything need to discuss for the previous week so if not uh, so we'll start with this uh, session so as uh, the uh, previous two weeks we will have uh, gone through the different uh, modules of the genomics and the uh, and the genomic sequences uh, and to uh, <coughs> and to analyze different genomic sequences so now the thing comes in the third week is the proteomics uh, based studies and the proteomics based approaches so now you can uh, understand that why uh, how those uh, those both genomics and proteomics thing can be linked and how where the what is the role of those genomic sequences Uh, that can be used further in understanding the proteomics uh, uh, the further uh, phenomena at the proteome level the effect of the changes or the mutations at the genome level so the first uh, I'd like to uh, so this is the same paper if you all uh, can remember so what uh, we are taking it as a case study so, so there you had seen that how the different Uh, genomic uh, level changes like the copy number uh, alterations or the uh, different uh, analysis different uh, changes uh, uh, how the mrna level uh, is correlated with the proteome level but now how you can measure the proteome level uh, and the protein level is that is using uh, different approaches mostly by using a mass spectrometry based proteomics approaches so here you can see that the after you get the tube normal tissue or the disease tissue or the tumor tissue so after after you get those uh, tissues so what you will do is that you will extract those proteins uh, and then you will digest through different uh, proteolytic enzymes like trypsin uh, then if, after the peptides you will inject it into the mass spectrometer through liquid uh, chromatography based techniques and then finally you will analyze the msms spectra and finally you will identify the proteins so now here during the identification of the peptides there remains a need to for a uh, very specific uh, database so that you can identify those peptides and those proteins which are present or which are differentially expressed or abundant at, at your level at the disease level or at the different uh, other conditions that you want to verify so here the you can imagine that if you have the genomic sequence a customized for example if this tissue 
for a diseased patient and if the genomic sequence is present for this particular uh, for this particular patient and you align it with the normal genomic sequence and prepare a customized database then you will get exact uh, uh, changes of the mutation level at the proteome level what you are getting right so this is uh, how uh, generally this interlinked can be happen and uh, this is mostly comprises of what you can say about the proteogenomics approach so this is an overall transcriptometry based proteomics workflow but before that we also need to understand how this happens and how we can identify the different peptides or different proteins so here i just like to give the example like uh, using a mrna based subtype or different kinds of subtypes uh, based on the mutations or the genetic level changes now you can see that at by using a proteomic analysis by using the uh, analyzing the whole proteome level uh, by analyzing the whole uh, proteome level you can identify by doing the clustering unsupervised clustering you can see the different subtypes by rising due to the proteomic level so that can give add an additional layer of the uh, during the different to characterize different cancers at the molecular level so whatever we used to think at the genetic level we can see that there is a, a subtle difference in the proteomic level or proteomic uh, subtypes can also be formed so this is one example uh, that how this workflow and this analysis alone also can give you some information and integration of course will help you in understanding at the different uh, levels of it so moving on so i like to give you some that to if you want to study about so about these proteomics approaches and proteins level at a detailed uh, space so this is one of the uh, article that you can all go through that analysis of proteins and proteomics by muspectometry by uh, mathias man uh, group so uh how the proteins what are the different kinds of mass spectrometers are there what are the different kinds of chromatographic techniques are there how the samples are prepared and how to analyze uh, those data so for example so if you i think if you all have gone through the lecture you have seen that the uh, peptides uh, the proteins are digested and form the peptides now peptides are co are bonded by the co nh bond to form the uh, the amino acids are uh, linked with the conh bond to form the uh, long chain of the peptides uh, but uh, then what you will can get is that when uh, you fragment those peptides then there comes different types of ions mostly the b ions and the y ions which in the n type terminus it gets the b ions and the c terminus which gets fragmented gives the y ions and uh, the other some other uh, of the due to the fragmentation of the uh, water ions or uh, other uh, different ions are also formed so after getting this y ions and b ions in when we uh, subtract it we get the exact monoisotopic uh, mass and we can exactly identify that which amino acid is present at that particular level so this is how generally the uh, generally we say that it is a tandem uh, ms ms mass mass uh, ms ms spectrometry where the first scan gives us the full m by z value of the parent compound and then after its fragmentation we get the different uh, particular amino acid at the ms ms level so this is how uh, done in the tandem mass uh, spectrometry this is what the nomenclature uh, is there that this process generates a series of fragments by single amino acid residue so we can get the exact m by z value for each particular amino acid so now uh, another thing is that the as i have said that it requires the protein identification by the database searching so key advance in this biological mass spectrometry is the for the identification of proteins by mass spectrometry data match to a database so if we provide the list of the proteins or if we know that this organism has this amount of proteins uh, and using a this uh, set of they will uh, it, the algorithms will 
theoretically break those peptide mass spectrum mass spectra and then i try to identify with the fragmentation spectra of the peptides uh, that has been done that has been generated and then the different proteins and the peptides are identified uh, so with this uh, <coughs> with uh, so it generally requires a robust database to identify the proteins uh, but the major uh, drawback remains is that it, it needs to be characterized before uh, in this method that it needs to be characterized that you know, need to know that the, the proteins present to provide the uh, algorithm to uh, identify those peptides now another thing is that the peptide another concept is the peptide mass fingerprinting so you need to know that a mass fingerprint where as i told that a pep protein uh, is degraded into a uh, peptide and then these masses uh, are obtained by different sources maybe by uh, multi uh, multi top or uh, using esi or different fragmented and then for the peptide masses for e for each entry is calculated and identified in this and then the finally when the pep list of the peptides are identified then the proteins can be ranked that what is the according to the number of the peptides matches uh, that what is the protein uh, what was the protein in your uh, sample so this is how this peptide this is uh, known as the peptide mass fingerprinting so this is another uh, paper which you all can go through to identify to understand the uh, abc's uh, full uh, of peptide sequencing so here you can see that you have, you have the cells uh, culture samples of uh, one is treated uh, one is treated and one is non treated or uh, treated with two different drug conditions then your after your sample preparation of application you will protein digest will different protolytic like this in lysine aspirin to see then the peptide will be separated so before going into the mass spectrometer it should needs to be uh, the peptide needs to be go undergo separation using a chromatographic techniques uh, might might be reverse phase uh, hpfc techniques or ion exchange chromatography so that the uh, peptides gets eluted at different times based on their uh, separation chromatogram and then will be sample will be ionized using either by electrospray ionization or maldi uh, or uh, different kinds of uh, so sources then the peptide ions will be injected into the mass spectrometer where the different types of mass analyzers are there like it might be quadrupole it might be time of flight it might be ion traps and then they will create based on the m by z values and their abundance relative abundances and the intensities they will create a spectra and after that peptide search and you will identify those proteins so this is the basic workflow uh, in a detailed uh, manner in a slight detailed way so this is a basic workflow so you need from the sample preparation to finally identification of those proteins so here but also you have if you have uh, as you have all of gone through the lecture that you need to have the different uh, you need to have the different uh, idea quantify those proteins so for example if you want to have us at a cell state 1 and at a cell state 2 so you need to quantify that what are those proteins that are differentially expressed in one condition or or what are those proteins that have been reduced so here there are different label based techniques uh, along with the level free quantification i think which will go in detailed uh, as you go along through so for example one is you know have uh, learnt about the tmt uh, labeling so one is that uh, in the silac or the stable isotope level uh, where you cell culture you where in the media you one cell state is uh, cultured with the normal arginine or another has cultured with the heavy and where
Yeah. So after this combining the cell lysates and after digestion of this protein, so you will identify the there will be a difference in peak because of the light level peptide and the heavy level peptide and we will quantify accordingly. Accordingly another is that of the another technique is the uh, ICAT where you will purify body will light linker and the heavy linker chain and here there are uh, again you will identify using this different uh, levels from the peak ratio of those light level and heavy level what is the quantify the proteins. So these are another two techniques uh, you, that by using you can uh, quantify for the relative quantification of the protein populations. Now you sorry. So let us now look at one of those search engines which is mascot which is freely available search engine. So here what we can do is that after you generate your mass spectrometry data then you can identify those proteins using this where you can specify the databases which contains the proteins of your interest of your organism and from there you can identify those proteins uh, so here we will have a today we will have a hands on and we will look at it how we can specify different parameters and then finally can specify and identify those different proteins. So here for example, if after performing an MSMS analysis, after this uh, precursor isolation, we will get those peptide precursors, sorry, and then it will be after MS1, uh, if that is, that was the length uh, full peptide, B L E N T I G T S I F D K. So after MS2, so now we can see that Y ions and B ions have got fragmented. And then this uh, M by Z values. So here you will get the different intensities of Y uh, M by Z values of the, the different intensities. And from there you can uh, we can identify each peptide that uh, by subtracting the masses and we can get the uh, reach to the conclusion of the exact monoisotopic mass for a particular amino acid. So this is an overall of the picture. So now for example let us go for mascot. So mascot hands on so let us so this is the this is the website. So I'll give it in the chat option. I want you all to try that list. Uh, so first of all you need to register uh, in So I hope uh, this uh, screen is visible to everyone. So after you click on those link so you will get the page of the matrix science of the mascot server. So have all of you gone to uh, till here, please respond then we will move forward. Please tell like the response. Have you all gone through it? after we go to it so first log on to it and click on to mascot database search okay so where is that here so we can go to mascot database search so here you will find that there is as access mascot server peptide mass fingerprint sequence query msms ion search as we were telling so here we can get different kinds of things. 
सो ऑल ऑफ यूर ओके विथ इट टिल नाउ Okay, fine. So now we will. So now we will move to the next thing. Is that? So here, after here, we can perform either peptide mass fingerprint, or we can either find MSMS ion search. So here we will go and search for the MSMS ion search. so i think you all can see here that you have got this kind of page so you will write your name provide your email such title okay so you might uh, so right accordingly so after that i am telling so now here we have to choose the databases okay till that you all have gone so now that databases now it's interesting so you can see that in the databases option one terminals right so anyone can anyone tell what is the meaning of the contaminants here or why it is written as contaminants any one of you or what are those contaminants databases uh, proteins can be can comprises of any one of you can you try please or write in chat or anything okay so during uh, so you think you all are not uh, uh, so in this uh, many cases during the sample preparation and all so there are also many abundant proteins that are present in the environment like you can say that of keratin or different kinds of uh, uh, abundant proteins in the environment that can be gets easily contaminated with your because of hair nails everything skin cells everything contains keratin and all so if those gets contaminated with your sample then that proteins will also get detected in mass spec but you don't want those in to be get detected you want the actual proteins to be get detected so there are databases that specify those contaminants databases which will let you know that these are not your actual protein that you are looking for but these peptides are not from your actual proteins so if there are some shared peptides so that will let you know that these are from the contaminants coming from the con different kinds of contaminants so these are not your actual peptides that you are looking for okay so here is that let us try with keeping contaminants first then another is that you can see that for the different uh, organisms there are different databases so if you want for particular uh, environmental you fungi human or if you want for something for those particular organism is okay but if you want the overall protein so you don't know the which organism it belongs to so you can just add swiss prot okay so here you can add swiss prot again in taxonomy we can give all entries enzyme we have used is trypsin so if you, anyone has used different uh, enzymes will give different or in combination of different enzymes uh, so here we can give trypsin so we can allow up to miss cleavages so ideally there should be no miss cleavages but uh, in generally practically it happens and we can allow up to one or two miss cleavages then quantitation so if it is as you have the, there are different like silac as i have told uh, some few moments few minutes before 
that it can be of silac or it can be of uh, TMT, two plex, six plex, as it is uh, told in your uh, lecture, the different techniques. So if it is none, then it's none. Then cross-linking, it has not been done anything, so it will be also kept as none. Now there are now there is fixed modification and one is a variable modification so what uh, so what of you all think can come as a fixed modification and what you all can think of it as uh, variable modifications Yeah, so would we, so I just gave the overview of the proteomics uh, workflow that uh, what uh, happens in the workflow, the different, uh, the how the proteins, uh, how I'll just brief you once again for every one of you and with that question that you can, uh, is relevant also so that we take the sample, we extract the protein from the tissue or the cell pellets or the serum or the plasma, we digest it with the peptides, uh, with the enzymes like trypsin. We then we add, uh, we with those peptides, we uh, using a liquid chromatography, we separate those in a column and then using ESI or MALDI, we fragment, we ionize those and analyze in the mass spectrometer and we identify it using MS and both at MS and MSMS level. So MS level it gives the M by Z of the parent ion and MSMS level, we fragment those further to finally identify each amino acid for identify the peptides that matches with a particular protein. So now what are the variable modification and what are the fixed modifications? So any one of you? So here is the thing is that when we perform sample preparation, so during the sample preparation, we need the our proteolytic enzyme to cleave or to act at the protein at a maximum level. So proteins you know that they remain in a that the proteins remain in a folded structure with various disulfide bridges linkages using cysteine uh, and different uh, amino acids uh, means cysteine uh, the sulfide uh, disulfide bond linkages. So what we generally do is that we need to cleave those linkages and make the protein uh, in a in a linear form so that the trypsin can act effectively on the uh, different uh, places of lysine and arginine and can we can get the maximum amount of peptides so during those process so that's why we need to perform reduction reduction of the proteins to reduction of the proteins means to break those disulfide linkages ss to sh uh, bond so here we do it with different uh, chemicals like uh, TCP uh, or uh, different uh, enzymes, uh, different uh, chemicals and then further you need to so that because once you leave those proteins into peptides but it uh, it, gen it again reforms back or the reaction becomes reversible so need to alkylate those residues so that it doesn't form those back again uh, into those folded structure and the trypsin can act effectively. So in this way, we induce a modification that is a carboamidomethylation. Here, in that's why, for generally when we when perform this kind of uh, analysis, we give carboamidomethyl in the C as a fixed modification and variable modifications you can know that if your protein is phosphorylated or if there is any ptm available we need to give uh, that is the variable modification that depends on different conditions so here we generally go for uh, oxidation at the methionine and phospho for ST or Y you can give but we generally go for oxidation uh, at methionine level as variable modification whenever we do this kind of analysis.
so this is what uh, generally is uh, the you can you fixed modification you always need to give and variable modification generally oxidation is given otherwise if you want to check for another thing you can give that accordingly so this is the peptide tolerance and the peptide charge you can that if you want all uh, 1 plus 2 plus and 3 plus or what you can give msms tolerance and uh, all the parameters and can look at it so now uh, after that you need to provide the data file so i'll give the data file so i think you don't have this data file so no problem so you all can learn about these parameters what needs to be done So I am giving this MGF file which is generated from the mass spectrometry data. So data format you can change. So MGF is a mascot generic format is the full form. So we will, so there are different uh, formats available so that the software can read and understand as there is in the DNA sequencing FASTA format is there, first Q format is there. So in uh, the spectra that is generated by different mass spectrometers gives the different kinds of uh, different kinds of uh, formats uh, data so we will give the mass code generic data and we will the instrument also you can specify so we are not giving we will start search so you all can play with these different kinds of parameters to look at that what are the variations in the data so after this so anyone has any question till now No, right? So everything is clear for everyone till now? So after this, so we will get this kind of values, results. So you can export it in the CSV file in different files. Let us look that what it is contains. So here we can see that here it has given match with three different proteins. Okay, one is this tubulin alpha three of the species Arabidopsis thaliana. Okay, and the code it has given as 165 mass matches. Matches means the number of peptides that it has matched with. So if we see that it has matched with 5 different peptides of this particular tubulin alpha 3 protein. So this is one of the best score match. Another is that of the same Arabidopsis thaliana it has given one match, one peptide matches. Here it has given 5 peptide matches. And for the third best score it has given one peptide matches. Okay, so there you can see one non-duplicate. So here five nine duplicate zero duplicate. So this by this you can say that the sample that you had given and the mass spec that you got the file, so that contains of the protein tubulin alpha three chain of the Arabidopsis thaliana. So you can say this. Now you can look at this different peptides that have. So he this is the peptides. So in of this in Swiss plot, these peptides have got identified. So now you can see the distribution. 
that what YINs have been identified, what BINs have been identified, what are those peptide spectra matches. So for this YIN, okay, and what are those BINs that have been presented? So IN score 55 matches. So using 16 most in, intense peaks, so 986 and C. So this is the calculation, this is the delta mass and this is the sequence. So you can see and identify. So the sequence will be first amino acid difference. You will get that it is coming for the monoisotopic mass of D, then for B, then for N. So ideally for every YIN there should be one BIN but uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't happen and so by deriving those uh, by minus uh, of for any ion it presents. So if you minus this and if you minus this you will get the monoisotopic mass uh, uh, and you can see that which amino acid it is present. So. So are all of you are clear about it? Why we selected in enzyme trypsin? Because uh, that uh, this sample has been digested with enzyme trypsin so if you for your experiment you use any other enzyme then you accordingly you will give uh, you will choose different enzymes uh, so that because it uh, it will then I uh, calculate the theoretical mass spectra of your database of the proteins originally you were giving the different uh, databases Uh, so would we can you just pick up which iron part so that's why we are choosing enzyme trypsin so if any anything comes in your question so they will mention that which enzyme to choose so why ions actually i had uh, said uh, in the starting of the class so this why ions uh, and the b ions i will just uh, go again so that you can understand so this is the peptides when at the after you identify the peptide at the MS level so you after the MS MS level you fragment those peptides further to identify the particular amino acid so here at the Y1 ions mass level and the Y2 ion you can identify that which amino acid is present so at the C type terminus when it is fragmented it gives generates to the Y2 type ions and the N terminus when it gets fragmented it gives the B type ions. So ideally for each uh, 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 B ion there should be one uh, corresponding uh, Y ion but sometimes this doesn't happen but uh, generally with the help of Y ions you can calculate the monoisotopic mass for each amino acid and then can calculate those masses and then can detect the sequence for this peptide. Are you clear? Would we? And uh, Upasana, are you clear why we cho chose uh, enzyme trypsin? So you all can uh, with the file uh, which you will have for your assignment and all. So you all can play with it uh, after uh, with different parameters and can see different results what it is coming and all. So here also uh, let us try with uh, another file and let us see that uh, if we can identify different proteins or not. So we will. So this is how you can, so here this with this you can identify that these are the peptides identified for this particular protein. This is the maximum score and these are those, this is the protein and if you want to go and look at each peptide level thing so you can also go and look at different ions that have been identified so here you can see that only no B ions have got identified and only the Y ions have got identified and from here only you can derive the sequences 
so a confident peptide will have both y ions and b ions got uh, identified but it's uh, still it's fine so let us go back and let us try with different file and see that if there is a and now this time we will remove the contaminants database okay so let us remove the contaminants database and let us add this plot and let us be more stringent allow up to zero miss privileges and fix modifications we will use second and we will give start now there is also an option of using decoy database because uh, decoy know that there are many contains many peptide sequences which are repeated or redundant so the chances of the false discovery rate gets increased so if you try to add decoy database as also so that the chances of fdr gets reduced So now let us look at So we have got of one is the chlorophyll AB binding protein of Sinapis alba so now you can see that we have gone for some stringent criteria with allowing zero miss privileges okay so number of score what is the score maximum score is this so which species we have got is sinapis alpha one is the arabidopsis thaliana chlorophyll ab binding protein so we can understand that it is more or less chlorophyll ab, AB binding protein and which uh, species so if you want there uh, after you get an initial idea that which uh, species is this so that you can go back and also go and search that uh, which is the species and you can search uh, by changing the species and can try to identify this peptide as uh, proteins as well okay so now this is for one instance so now we will see so this is the chlorophyll ab binding protein so database we had given swiss prot so what is the monoisotopic mass taxonomy you will get so which are those peptides so matched peptides so this so these are the matched peptides of that particular protein that have been got identified so these are the peptides query so you can get all those information what are the ranks and what are those ions that have been got selected have been identified okay so now if we go and change for the same thing okay so we had removed contaminants we are now keeping it contaminants this is the same file and now we will add allow up to two missed privileges okay and then we will start search so is there any so see so now the scores have you can see that the scores have little bit changed 
and also there have been some extra addition uh, arabidopsis thaliana thiol protease protein so you can uh, you all can see that there are some changes so if you go and play with different parameters you will get to identify some of the peptides but the one with which is matching will always give you the best score and you can identify that which particular protein does your sample belong to or the peptide and can identify it accordingly okay so this is how you can uh, play and learn and identify those peptides and can understand the peptide sequences and the ms2 fragmentation and how this happens at the ms2 level so so i think this uh, this uh, i think the link is shared with you all where you can get the link youtube link as well as the presentation and everything presentations link and all i think it is shared uh, by the nptel team so you can get all the weeks uh, presentation right so any uh, any question regarding to it that why we use this parameter and all so everyone is clear right so you all can try out uh, try it out on your own with the uh, different files that have been provided by you uh, and can look at with uh, adding the different uh, modifications that you can you can identify any post translation modification or not by giving a particular uh, organisms uh, hello means organisms in the selecting any organism particular organism are you able to get anything or not okay is there any question else so you all are uh, so you have understood uh, the how mascot works right okay so the majority of this thing is that you need to identify generally we need to identify this msms ions that we get uh, to identify those proteins peptides and then finally the protein so uh, so you can think of it in a way we have the proteins we bake it into the peptides inject into the mass spectrometer then we go backwards and identify those ions then the peptides and then the protein so we go from this side to this side and then come back again to identify finally identify those proteins and uh, later on as we move ahead with this course so we will get to know about uh, different kinds of uh, uh, quantification techniques different how to identify the peptides or the proteins uh, that are differentially expressed in two different condition in disease condition and the control condition or in the different when you treat your cells with two different uh, drugs or two different uh, conditions when you see grow your cell into different condition what is the changes at the proteome level so how you can identify and quantify those so in this way you can go and learn so this was for this weeks uh, proteome thing uh, and uh, so now is that uh, so do you all remember that uh, each week we uh, also uh, say about one tool that can help you in analyzing your genomics data finally make the customized database and finally you can integrate with your proteomics data at the protein level data you can make the database and can search through it and can identify those particular peptides so you all are familiar with it right so first day we are told that we need to retrieve if we cannot generate our own data or our own sequence so we need to retrieve from the freely accessible data Uh, that are available so one is that sequence read archive so for this sare uh, toolkit is there from where we generate where we can download the data after we download the data or we generate the data we need to have a uh, perform our quality check of our data sequence to identify that whether this peptide uh, whether this sorry genomic sequence that we have got the bases that have been called by the uh, sequencing technology that that have been used that the bases are confident and uh, it's the actual base and not by random or not by chance that has happened so after it we need to align with it with the reference genome so you, if you 
want to create one customized database that okay for this patient you take from the tumor sequence you take the sam same dna sequence from the normal cells or uh, that doesn't have the tumor so what are those sequences now by if you want to align these two sequences from the same patient only then one benefit you, or advantage you will get that you will get rid of all the germline variants and you will focus advantage is you not actually advantage but if you want to focus only on the somatic variants but you will not able to identify the germline variants since you are matching with the same patient's uh, genomic sequence but eventually if we go uh, and align with the reference genome that is present like hg19 or hg13 then you will get also know about the germline variants or if for a particular that patient for that particular disease like for particular cancer if there are any role of the germline variants as well so for this aligning this genomic sequences so here is the tool that is the bautai uh, tool uh, which is been used uh, extensively or burrows wheeler uh, aligner that is the bwa that is used for aligning these two types of sequences and to give you the to ident to help you in identify those variants uh, that is the uh, that is you call that uh, to know that which is the snps that we have discussed previously in previous two weeks that what are those snps or what are those further analyzing that how we can identify and also to uh, annotate those variants and also further to perform the to create the database uh, customized database for the proteomics data so this is the tool so you can understand that how step wise we need to go and one need to perform the analysis to identify the first sequencing the genomic data so first then the quality check then alignment so till that these are the tools till which one can perform so i hope you all uh, get some idea about the tools at least at the names of the tools and how you all can approach if you get this kind of problem so any question regarding it or any question from the previous weeks or anything if you are not clear okay so everyone is clear uh, about previous weeks as well and for today's also there so only would be is uh, replying uh, others can you also reply so blast is generally used blast cannot be used uh, for this type of application where you need to uh, align uh, using a uh, chromosome wise you need to align and there will be chromosome wise sequences will be there you can have paired end sequences as well as uh, uh, different uh, sequences uh, so that's why you need to have a so that's why you need to have a so blast generally is used for small sequences to, uh, especially if you have some unknown sequences and if you want to identify that from which organism is belong to or uh, if you here if you uh, if a is your organism known already known or not uh, known so for those reasons generally blast are used for this kind of applications genomic applications where you need to identify the variants so because in blast there is no option that you can identify those variants or annotate those variants so for this generally this specialized uh, different tools are generally used okay upasna ah uh, so deep deletion ah uh, sorry actually i forgot about it uh, really this i had uh, told previous week that we will discuss it so definitely i'll take it up in the next week about this uh, what exactly in the c bio portal they mean about deep deletion and the shallow deletion uh, so good point so uh, yeah i just forgot it so we'll definitely i'll keep it in the next weeks lecture about those deep deletion so any other question 
thank you for uh, making me remember so if not then okay so then we can okay i'll confirm it because uh, i don't want to say because i am not sure about it the deep deletion so i don't want to comment on that so i will definitely look into it and will say it on the next week so sorry for that uh, but yeah so okay so okay then so thank you all for joining it uh, so we will close this session today so next week we will again okay Thank you.